Whistles have been used by a number of people in a number of professions for many, many, many years. Uh, this makes antique whistles a great area of vintage and antique collecting just because of the wide variety of whistles that existed and the number of departments, industries and agencies that these whistles were manufactured for. In this video I am looking at a type of whistle uh, which is called the general service whistle. Uh, it's called this because this particular type of whistle was manufactured for all types of services uh, ranging from police forces, fire departments, the army, the navy, uh, for general purpose use uh, by private citizens, by cyclists, by railway guards, uh, by the scouts, almost anyone you could think of. Um, and I thought I would share my collection of whistles and make a video about it. Now, this is my collection of whistles. They range in age from about 1915 uh, to about 1950, 1960. I have a few which are a little uh, more modern than that, but most of these are from the first quarter of the 20th century. Now, these are all of the same general style, as you can see. Um, they all work the same way. They all sound more or less the same. They're all made the same way. Um, most of these will have been made of brass. Um, and they feature a mouthpiece, a barrel, an end cap, a loop to hold onto and to put a chain onto two sound holes, and a, see if I can get it to focus, and a plate inside called a slab that divides the whistle so that when you blow it, it creates not one, but two sounds that ring out together. And uh, the whistles shown here um, were made for a number of different organizations throughout the years, different purposes, uh, different departments, and I'll just go through a few of them. Uh, this one here uh, was made by the Joseph Hudson & Co. Whistle Manufactory, and it is the Acme Referee. Uh, this was made around, I think it was about the 1900s, 1910s, and as the name suggests, this is a sporting referee's whistle. It is made of brass, as you can see. Originally, it would have been nickel plated. You can see some of that up the top here, but you know, after about a hundred years, it's all it's all come off. But it's very nice. It's a bit battered, but it still works. Um, none of these whistles have P's. Um, they're all P-less whistles. So that's one. Uh, this is my oldest dated whistle. This is a First World War British Army officer's whistle uh, used in the trenches uh, in World War I. And uh, the Hudson Company produced so many of these whistles that they actually ran out of brass halfway through the war. Um, they were constantly short of brass because they needed brass for bullet casings as well. 
Uh, this one is from 1915, as you can see. Um, they were produced really quickly. Um, they only put the company name and the date of manufacture, and that was it, and the, uh, the patent number at the top. Um, if you compare that with, uh, let's see, if you compare that with something like this whistle, which is from about the 1920s, See if I can get that to focus. You'll see that it has a lot more detail on it. Um, this is an old police whistle, the Metropolitan, one of the most famous models, uh, made by the same company, and you'll just see how different it looks. This one has the company name, the address, the model name, everything. This one, by comparison, has almost nothing on it because they had to produce them so quickly, and this is what the uh, British Tommy will have heard uh, out in the trenches in around 1916. And this, like I said, is an old police whistle. I've got a few of these. I've got this one. Then I've got... Let's see. I've got a few of them, actually. This is another one, another Metropolitan. And then, this is another one. This is a modern Metropolitan whistle. Uh, the sound is still the same, so... <whistles> compare that with this one, which is an earlier model, Metropolitan. <whistles> it's a little higher pitched. But the general sound of this whistle is very distinctive, and it's hardly changed in over a hundred years. Um, for example, this one here, this is the Acme Boy Scout whistle made for the Scouts. It's a very distinct sound. Um, modern P whistles, modern escargot whistles, they sound nothing like this. Um, this is a sound that you'll only get from these older whistles and from uh, companies like Acme which still make them. And uh, most of these were made for um, specific organizations, hospitals, lunatic asylums, um, prisons, police forces, fire brigades. But they also made a lot of uh, just generic whistles uh, for use by the public. And that's what a lot of these remaining ones are. Uh, these two here, these smaller ones as you can see these small these two smaller ones were made for the scouts just like this one as you can see they're of a slightly smaller size this one is made for the girl guides which was the female counterpart of the boy scouts and this is a uh, scout guide whistle so I'll blow these two and let you hear what they sound like. Much higher pitched. And even more higher pitched as you can hear. So there's those two. And then these are just uh, general purpose, general service whistles uh, for people who wanted one to carry around, um, you know, for hailing a taxi cab or for calling for assistance or just if they worked in an, in an industry where there was a lot of noise. Um, these have a very, very piercing sound. Um, the original Metropolitan Police Whistles, which were made uh, in the 1880s, were designed to be heard I think it was about a mile, a mile and a half away. So they're very, very far carrying and uh, very effective. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to share that video with you. And again, this is the uh, this is my entire collection. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you want to see more of the stuff which I collect and. Uh, which I write about, then please visit my blog. The link is in the description below. Thank you very much for watching.